Hi, everyone. Uh, it's a uh, great pleasure for me to be here. And I'm a little nervous, so <laughs> I might be not speaking clearly. If so, please indicate that to me. And uh, today I will talk about a topic I've been uh, interested about uh, during a year or so. It's bots. Um, so I was already introduced. I do open source and I maintain projects. I mentor people and I work at Red Hat. Uh, so let's uh, imagine you're in charge of a project and it's probably hosted on GitHub. Uh, you and your co-maintainers, uh, you're responsible for keeping it in a good shape. Uh, you need to do various workflow-ish things like um, trying uh, new issues, uh, looking at pull requests and reviewing them, merging things, um, and similar stuff, writing docs, doing releases. Um, you also want to sail, safely evolve the project. So you've got CI running, uh, you test it across various supported environments. But uh, is it enough? Your project becomes bigger and uh, the volume of activities is getting unbearable. Tasks are getting boring. Um, well, once uh, you heard from a friend that uh, you can automate more things and it sounds fun. So you set up your CI pipeline to build and publish your software whenever a git, tab, a git tag is created. Going further, you don't want to hard code your version, version of your software in a text file, so you set up build scripts to grab that version from a git tag. Now you can relax and be happy about your little automation project. Your job is done here. Well, one day you integrate uh, a change log generator tool, let's say Towncrier, and your re release workflow becomes a bit more complicated. Every pull request submitter is supposed to additionally add another file which contains uh, some change note about what they did. And the next day, another maintainer who forgot to read new docs pushes a new tag. You notice it, you open your CI page and uh, you try change the job which does build and publish. And maybe you're lucky, you got to be faster than the automation, you cancel the job, you won this race and started quickly cleaning up the mess before somebody noticed this embarrassing git tag in the tree. But maybe not. Maybe the automation got faster than you. You set up it uh, quite good and uh, you didn't notice it on time. And the wrong artifact that got published because you set up uh, it to look at the git tag, git tag was correct. Somebody just forgot to generate change logs file so that it could be included. So you go there, do things properly, generate that file, and do a post-release for your software. By now, you must have realized that incomplete automation may be misleading. It can probably be more harm harmful than the lack of it. If you don't have any automation and you have docs, uh, it's probably a bit more robust. So partial automation of multi-step processes is vulnerable to human errors. So automate parts, like all parts of your workflow, so that nothing would be forgotten. Well, at some point you discover that uh, you can also react to other actions users do on GitHub they create issues, put comments and stuff. So you set up robots to help you greet first timers when they submit their first 
issue or pull, re pull request. And uh, thanks to authors of pull requests once they got merged. And after all hard maintenance work you do, you deserve to take a break. So you plan a vacation, you even set up a bot informing everyone who tries to take you on GitHub that you're going to be away and you will not see that. And you don't worry uh, that your temporary absence will cause any issues on the project. It will not affect project health. You're not confident that uh, those tiny chatty, chatty bots, uh, they are your friends. You can rely on them. And it doesn't matter how closely you pay attention at GitHub, at what's going on, your automations, if you set up that right, will work regardless. Whether you're on a vacation or taking a break or something. But keep taking care of it. And on, the, on this screenshot, there is a bot which actually does this information about out of office thing or out of open source or whatever. So, when a project is way more popular than a team can handle, you can empower the community to participate in maintenance. And parts of your project can be partially or fully maintained by other humans from the community. And they will not require any attention from the core team. They will be com completely separate. That's uh, how Ansible Core operates, by the way. But that's a story for another time. It's a few screenshots from a few days ago from my notifications personally. It's quite a lot. And the number of issues and pull requests which are currently open in Ansible Core repository. It's un unbearable. Humans cannot deal with that. So, uh, there are some other use cases for bots. They include linting, auto formatting. They can help you backport things, participate in release processes, and much more. The application is actually limited only to your imagination and creativity. So, how do we do this? There is an ecosystem around GitHub which uh, allows bots to be first-class citizens there. It's called GitHub Apps. So let's take a look how it looks from the user perspective. When user wants to install this thing, this is this window where they should hit install. And after that, they select one profile of a user or, a, or an organization where they want to install it. Because this kind of apps it's reusable, and one application can be installed into multiple places. You don't have to redeploy it for uh, specific cases. This is how the confirmation window looks like. You can even select uh, certain repositories to give access to, not the, all of them. And it also shows the permissions, the privileges, the application asks you to provide to, the, uh, to them in order to operate. Yeah. GitHub apps have quite advanced uh, access control management compared to other integration models. And you don't have to expose things if you don't want to. And when you're using a GitHub app, uh, its primary interaction method is acting as a bot. So when your application posts things on the GitHub, it gets this label. If you can look at the last comment, it says bot next to the no response application name. It is clearly distinguishable 
that it's not human, which is also important because uh, you don't want to confuse people. I saw situations when people tagged uh, our bot back because they thought it's human, because they could tag it. And uh, if the application really, really needs to do some actions uh, on behalf of users, uh, this application should uh, take them to OS flow and get another token for that. And it has a separate set of privileges attached to it. And uh, each GitHub application gets a dedicated uh, rate limit and uh, it is separate for any installation uh, where you attach this application. For example, if you install the application in your user profile and then in the organization, those two uh, bonds will have separate uh, rate limits. Unlike uh, other types of integration, which is uh, more or less popular now still, where you acquire an OS token of a user account and try to act as that user. So please don't do that and uh, use proper type of integration, which is, in this case is uh, GitHub apps. This is... Uh, how event selection looks like when you set up your application in GitHub UI. Basically, the developer selects the number of events the application wants to uh, receive from GitHub. GitHub sends webhooks, which are basically HTTP requests, post requests with a JSON payload, and then uh, web app would typically re react to that, do some actions, maybe hit other GitHub APIs. And it's all uh, combined into one entity, not into multiple separate entities, as in the case when you just use some user account for authentication and then uh, separately set up some webhooks on uh, just one repository. It's different and it's actually better designed. Also, when you use uh, GitHub apps uh, type of authentication, you can uh, access some of the APIs which are not accessible to other types of tokens. One example would be Checks API, which you probably saw in integrations like Travis and some others. It allows you to embed some results of uh, your application operation right into the GitHub UI. And you don't have to lead users outside of GitHub to do some simple actions. You can even add buttons there. So your workflow is even more interactive. So, I want to show you a few uh, developments I was working on. When first uh, the Chex API were uh, announced, I wanted to play with them badly and then I realized that I can't because it turned out that I need to use GitHub apps, which I never heard of. So I've been poking around and uh, actually did it. Uh, I wrote a CLI tool called Check-in. I had to hack a few places in the GitHub API wrapper because uh, Python wrappers are rarely following the cutting edge APIs, which are still in preview, for example. And uh, that libra library still doesn't support Jax API, even though it's available since May of the last year. Um, so the idea was to 
integrate CIs with this kind of uh, web page, checks page, and post some uh, CI result there from CIs which don't support this type of integration. For this, you need uh, to register a GitHub app, get some credentials like private key, application ID, put them into environment, and then run it from uh, basically from your CI. And it will work. You can also use this to just play around with this API and to see what you can do with it. This is one of my first attempts to play with it. You can put kitten there. You can add uh, annotations there. Annotations are things which you can attach to certain parts of diff, which is very, very useful when you run linters and stuff. You can put some uh, markdown formatted contents there. And your check suit can actually consist of multiple different checks. Another thing that I tackled was a CLI linter tool, which I just ran on the source code which I downloaded uh, from the pull requests and then posted back. It shows how to how to post uh, annotations there. This uh, thing in the bottom is it's actually annotation, and if you click it, it can lead you to source code to exact place uh, where the linter error takes place. It's pretty cool. A while back, uh, Pip maintainer wrote me. His name is Pradun, and he asked me to research rewriting their legacy integration check-in. The integration was just checking uh, the, whether the user who submitted pull request also submitted a change fragment. So I looked at it, I wrote a thing called chronographer, and uh, this is how the successful run looks like. You can be more illustrative about what is the result of whatever your integration is doing. It's, it's more powerful than just some green or red line in the status list. This is how the failed check looks like. The page actually resembles that there is something missing. The history is broken. You can also rerun stuff like checks right from GitHub UI, just with a single click without having to go to some other website or having to write a comment on GitHub so that it would trigger some actions in their integration. So let's talk about how this kind of integration works in general. So basically, you're having a bot and a GitHub platform. In GitHub platform, you register your application, and then it knows where to send events. Your bot accepts those events, flags GitHub that it's fine, and then uh, does some, something with that event. It also should uh, authenticate properly as an installation. Because uh, of the specific of this kind of application, and this application can be installed uh, into multiple accounts, the information is attached in the event. It indicates from which repository and from which installation it came. And then bot should authenticate using this data. But when you look at the Python ecosystem around this, it's actually got problems. So all soli solutions I found actually suggest using low-level uh, frameworks like setting up a web server yourself, copy-pasting a lot of bootstrap of that web server, 
and then your actual logic, which your bot does, may be 20 times smaller than setting up the web server. It doesn't feel right. And also GitHub itself has some issues. Sometimes it delivers data in different formats. Like in, in one event it will put timestamp and then in other event it will uh, put time in different format. Problems. So I've got some advices about how to do this. So we should follow Unix way. We should uh, run, uh, write small bots which solve some smaller problems and are not monolithic. You should check prior art first, if it exists. And it's better to use higher level frameworks. From such framework, I would wish that it would abstract away all of the things which are strictly low level, like networking stuff, web server stuff. Who need that? I need events. I need data from GitHub and entities which are familiar to me from GitHub API, from uh, documentation they advertise. JavaScript community has such a framework which is largely advertised by the GitHub, it's ProBot, but we are Pythonistas, we don't want to use that. I would also like this framework to abstract away authentication things. I don't need to re-implement this over and over again. You should provide some helpers for typical problems, maybe decorators. So I decided to tackle this problem. I had a fantasy how it could look like. And basically, it could look like this. It's pretty simple. There is some function occurring which accepts the parsed data from the event, which is subscribed to some certain kind of event. In this case, it's issue comment and when it's created only, not other kinds of actions. And the framework should also expose you some API client which is already pre-authenticated and can be used right away. You don't need to think about whether it's an installation or application level authentication. They can access different uh, levels of APIs. You, you just want to use it. And then you can take this client and then just use it to some API call or something. So, yeah, it looks like bots are getting easier. And here's some code for actually entry point for this thing. You, you want to just import something and say, I want this to be a bot. You don't want to configure it, run it on local host, on this port, maybe, and some other arguments. No, you, you just put some runner for your bot, some framework. Now, you don't always want or need to deploy a web server to react to things on GitHub. Uh, this previous autumn, they announced this thing, it's called GitHub Actions. It's basically a workflow thing, which they run on their uh, own infrastructure. And they are spawned in response to some events happening on GitHub but the user gets to configure how the workflow would look like. They currently have this visual editor, which allows you to combine multiple actions. So this looks like a tree, and the top node is the entry point to this workflow. It specifies that it's triggered by the push event. So whenever anybody pushes something, then git push is triggered. Then it runs some check, 
And then it runs three things in parallel if that check uh, is fine. Each of these nodes is a Docker container which GitHub runs on their infrastructure. You can configure it and you can share it. It's actually pretty easy. And also GitHub injects some information like uh, event data and optionally a GitHub token to this environment. So it sounds nice. And if your integration don't, don't have uh, anything like uh, stateful, you probably should use those. And the framework I described earlier would actually support it out of the box. You just need to spawn another entry point instead of web server run the action processing. The other things are the same. The event handlers are the same. You can reuse things. It's easy. And by the way, Probot can do that as well. If you like JavaScript, of course. This is the same bot chronographer I've shown earlier, the failed check, but this check is posted from an action, actually. It doesn't look very different. The only different thing is that it's under different section. It's not under the application, it's under the GitHub actions on this left menu. Um, there is a problem, though. This feature is not enabled for everyone, so you, you have to ask for it. Here's the URL, and uh, if you follow it, just hit I want to subscribe for it, and then you wait for some time, and then uh, they grant you access. I'll be doing a workshop on how to write bots exactly on Sunday. And uh, we'll have a walkthrough of the complete application creation and deployment process. We'll get a bot to Heroku. We'll configure everything on GitHub UI. And we'll see how we can debug things and stuff. And as a bonus, we'll also play with this thing I noticed earlier. It's GitHub Actions and uh, we'll be able to try them out. Now, I, I'm aware that most of you don't have access there, but I texted GitHub and uh, they can actually provide this access if you send me your GitHub handles like by the end of today, because it's like time-limited action. So if you want to try this out, reach me out or find me in person and just tell me which account I should send them uh, to get you enrolled. And yeah, so here's some resources you can check out. I will publish this online so you don't have to like, rush and save everything. And yeah, I think for today it's uh, all for me. And thank you for your attention and uh, I'm expecting some questions maybe. Much for your talk. Uh, the most upvoted question was, do you have favorite stories where automation helped save a ton of time, or alternatively, where it went horribly wrong, but no humans or kittens were killed? <laughs> I'm not sure about humans or kittens, <laughs> but uh, it saves us time at uh, Ansible Core. We have this thing called modules in Ansible, and only about a hundred of them are core supported, and about two thousand of them are community supported. We don't uh, intrude into the activities the users do in uh, their modules. The modules have community maintainers. Community maintainers can vote 
And if several persons say that uh, it's fine, ship it, our bot will merge thing. So it's basically saving um, us a lot of time. As you might have noticed from the screenshot I shared with notification, not all, not all of the time, but uh, it's still a game changer. There are a couple of co uh, comments about uh, about uh, the sound and its volume. Uh, we'll try to fix that. And also, if, if you can, and uh, you cannot hear very well, there's still plenty of places up front. So that may also partially help. And thank you for pointing this out to us. Uh, where do GitHub apps run? You already mentioned that, sort of. Uh, but there's more. Are there other constraints uh, other than the rate limiting, such as available memory, disk access, allowed dependencies, and so on? Basically, GitHub apps are your applications. You use whatever server you want, but you might want to try my framework, which will simplify things a lot. Uh, memory constraints and stuff come from an, any environment where you can deploy this web server. So basically, they are virtual, not hard requirements. Uh, currently, this framework I wrote it only supports Python 3.7. It uses uh, context vars, and uh, they are not backported, so not less than Python 3.7. That's a constraint for now, at, it, at this stage at least. The next question. Will GitHub Actions be the death of GitHub Probot and GitHub Apps in general? Mm, I think not. Because GitHub apps uh, allow you to have uh, stateful things like having some database in your web application and uh, store data there, store state. And GitHub actions are currently in the beta, actually. So they are not ideal. They are just Docker containers with a few features. It reminds me of serverless concept, but not completely. They have a number of uh, limitations. They have limited access to some APIs. They have a limited number of uh, workflows uh, per repository, I think. And uh, if you were to run something in Docker, so it would be Docker in Docker, uh, part of actions are forbidden as well. For example, you cannot mount volumes there. That's what I hit when I tried to put Molecule in an action. But we succeeded putting uh, an Ansible lint in an action, which you can actually use. It's, it's on the GitHub slash Ansible slash something, like Ansible lint action or something. Thank you. And the final question, is this compatible with GitLab pipelines? No, it's a GitHub native uh, concept. It's, I think it resembles some things which social networks do with their like games and applications where users in, install this thing into their accounts and uh, provide these privileges to access data separately. But uh, currently, I'm not aware of any other platform uh, having this concept like it is at, at GitHub. I was thinking about it and I really hope that they at some point actually copy this. And that was our last question. Thank you so much, Sviatoslav. Thank you.